Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode here on Gladiator Disc Golf. Today we're tackling a topic and a skill that a lot of people don't use to their advantage. Today we're talking about how to properly use field work. If you're brand new to the channel, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for coming and stopping by. Please make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can find out the next time a video comes out. Alrighty guys, let's go ahead and let's talk about field work. Let's first start off with what field work is. And it's really simple because it's in the name. Alright, field work for disc golf is when you go out to a field and you work on a specific skill. Now the uh, the key word in that definition is specific, okay? So what I wanna start off with talking about are four things that you don't want to do, okay? And I have my little notebook here so that I don't forget these points, all right? The four things that you do not want to do when doing field work. The first is throw aimlessly in a field, okay? That's the biggest waste of time for yourself is to just go to a big old empty field and just throw. And the reason why is because you have nothing to aim at, so how do you know what's a good throw? How do you know what's a bad throw? Also, how do you know if you've hit the right release point? How do you know if you threw the disc well if you're not aiming at anything? Think about a round of disc golf. You're never just throwing aimlessly. You're always aiming for something. So if when you compete, you're aiming at something, why are you not going to practice the same way? So throwing aimlessly is probably the worst thing that you could do with field work. The second thing is working on multiple facets or aspects of your game all at once. If you're working on the backhand throw and you're working on hitting the power pocket, you're working on engaging the hips, and you're working on snapping the disc through, that is three huge components that's, that are going to take you a lot of time to learn and to master. And to try and tackle all of them at once is incredibly overwhelming, it's mentally exhausting, and you're going to begin to feel really discouraged really quickly because you're not hitting your goals. The third thing is throwing for too short of amount of time and throwing too long, all right? There's this sweet spot with field work where you've been really working hard but you're not waiting to the point where you're completely fatigued and your form goes all bonkers, okay? And then the last thing, the fourth and final thing to not do is rush. When you're in a field you should, and you're throwing and you're practicing on certain skills, do not rush. You shouldn't be rushing in a disc golf tournament or even in a casual round, rushing through your throw, because then you throw your body out of sync. The same thing here with field work. There's no reason to rush through any of your throws and through any of your practice. You wanna make sure that you're practicing right before you're practicing fast. So those are the four things that you should not be doing. Here are four things that you should be doing. The first thing is taking your time, okay? And I kinda just mentioned that a little bit. Take your time, guys. If, uh, and the reason why taking your time is easy to do with field work is because when you're throwing, you should not be throwing too short and not too long. In other words, finding that sweet spot. If you're working on learning a disc's flight and you have you know, two to three or maybe even five or six discs of the same mold, and you're working on learning this mold, all right, you know how it's supposed to fly more or less, and so you're working on that one skill. You're working on learning this one disc on the flat throw, then on an Anheuser throw, then on a Heiser throw. So it's one thing. There's no reason to rush through that one thing. Take your time. The next thing that you're going to want to do with field work is have a target, something to aim at. And I have a couple uh, options here. You can use a basket, okay? They do make portable disc golf baskets, whether they're metal stand-up ones or foldables. You can bring a basket to a field. You can also, if you don't have a basket, don't want to bring your basket, whatever the reason is, you can also go to Walmart and pick up some soccer cones, okay? I like the tall ones. You can kind of see behind me, there are four cones in a straight line, all right? I like the tall ones because they're easier to see and sort of gauge that distance, um, but you want to have something to throw at. Also, a natural, not a natural thing, but unless there's a random tree in a field, use light posts. If you're at a soccer field with a bunch of fields in a row, you're probably gonna have some pretty tall light poles. 
lining yourself up to be throwing out one of those poles or at least in that direction even if it's 500 feet away because it'll give you something to be aiming at so having a target is super important the third thing is working on one facet at a time are you working on that pull through are you working on engaging those hips um, with the forehand are you working on snapping and releasing the disc out in front of you okay there's a lot of different things that you can work on. Pick one thing at a time. All right, don't overwhelm yourself with, with, with uh, a bunch of different things. The fourth thing is, to, is throwing to work, but not with bad form. Now this is all golfer dependent because everyone has different endurance levels. Everyone is at a different stage in their game. A beginner will not be able to do field work for as long as a professional, advanced player, or intermediate player. And none of those three groups are going to be able to do field work for nearly as long as the other. And also, from uh, recreational and beginner to intermediate, advanced, and professional, you're all going to be, we, we are all working on, on completely different things and we're all focusing on different aspects and so the way the reason that comes into play is you have to consider what's your ability what's your endurance like what skill are you working on and so I recommend doing field work somewhere between 30 to 60 minutes for the average player now you have to consider the mental side of things as well if you are putting for 60 minutes that is mentally exhausting to be focusing on the putts for 60 minutes so you may only want to do a 30 minute putting practice if you bring 10 discs out to the field with you and you're throwing and then having to go retrieve those 10 discs a 60 minute practice session might be pretty good for you or 45 minutes or even longer depending on the temperature how hot it you know what's the weather like all of these things so it's important to consider those things but the most important thing in all that is that you stop working when your form gets bad the last thing you should be doing is practicing with bad form because then you've just completely ruined the previous 30 to 60 minutes of hard work that you put in so when you see your form getting all bad don't try and push through it stop field work for the day go home wash up whatever it is and come back another day and keep working that's about it guys so i hope you found this video helpful taught you a little bit about ways you can make field work work for you and not you be hesitant and working way too hard with field work all right well that's it guys until next time have a great round